hey, welcome to the shield. How is everyone doing? Praise Great getting Lord. better. Let's stand to our feet and let's just sing unto the Lord today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Came to praise the Lord. It's a highway to his throne room. You want to go to the throne room today? That's where he inhabits, right? And he inhabits our praises to him. It says he inhabits the praises of his people. You are his people created to worship and glorify him. Praise the Lord. Praise is a highway to the throne of God. Praise is a highway to the heart of God. Praise is a highway to the move of God. Let's sing it again. Praise is a highway to the throne of God. Praise is a highway to the heart of God. Praise is a highway to the move of God. Hallelujah. Praise is a highway to the throne of God. Praise is will roar the mountains will bow to the name of the Lord he is our God he will be praised praise is a highway to the throne of God praise is a highway to the heart of God Praise is a highway to the move of God. Praise is a highway. Praise your Lord. Praise is a highway to the throne of God. Praise is a highway to the heart of God. Praise is Church will awake. 
His anthem will drown all others' refrains. He is our song forever. Reigns. Praise is a highway to the throne of God. Praise is a highway to the heart. sing it with me. Praise, praise is a highway to the throne of God. Hallelujah, yes, to the heart of, oh, praise you, Lord. Oh, yes, to the move of God. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Sing it. Praise is a to the throne of God. Praise is a highway to the heart of God. Praise is a highway to the move of God. Go ahead and lift your voices. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We magnify your name. We celebrate you today.
So we're saying, lift up our heads, fling wide the gates, break down the walls with a shout. We need to see some shouting up in here. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes. We shout to you, God. Praise your name. We break down the walls with a shout of praise, with a shout of praise. We pull heaven down. We pull heaven down. Oh, sing like thunder. Sing like thunder. Whoa, I think thunder's pretty loud. you to move Lord we send up praises today praise is a highway to the throne of God praise is a highway to the heart of God praise is a highway to the move of God hallelujah Glory to you, Lord. I respond with praise, Lord. Glory, glory. Unto you do I lift up my soul and worship. Magnify you. Make your greatness known, God. Glory, 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 glory. You're wonderful. You're awesome. There's no one beside you, Lord. No one above you, God. No one greater than you, Lord. I praise your name, Jesus. I make you great. I make your name great among the people, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I'm desperate for your presence, Lord. I'm desperate for your presence, Lord. Your throne room, your throne room. Hey, la 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 la, say, con resina na 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 na. Thank you, Father. Jesus, we are mama high. Mechribi vishumreri asa. Hallelujah. Thank you for your life, Father. Your mercies greet us every morning. Great, uh, great is your faithfulness, God. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath.
about the greatness of God. Oh 
the Lord just brings to, to mind the lady who came to the house and she, she was a harlot and you know what she did she came and gave before the father expensive expensive perfume she poured it the sacrifice. That's why I call it's called the sacrifice of praise. Bring the sacrifice of praise. It costs you. Your feet get tired. Your arms get tired. It's a sacrifice for you to get out of yourself and get into the Father. It's a sacrifice of praise. We bring all these sacrifices of praise to the feet of the Lord. All the worship that's been bottled up inside, we release it. We release it over the feet of the Father. Hallelujah. Bring it all the worship to you, Lord. Pouring it out on you, pouring it out on you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. He inhabits your praises. Open wide your gates. Let him fill you up. Open wide your gates. Let the worship flow. In your presence, Lord. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, we Until I look like the one I behold, and I will pour out my vials until all of me is on the floor, and at your Yes, at your feet I will sing, and at your feet I will sing. Yes, at your feet I will sing. Your name is sweet like honey. Your voice it sounds like. Your eyes are full. 
the sons of men. Your name is pure and holy, for you alone are worthy. There is none beside you, Lord of lords and King of kings. And I will say here for a little while, until I look like the one I you behold, yes, <laughs> and I will pour out my vial until all of me is on the floor, and at your feet I will see, and at your at your feet I will sing I give you all my worship I give you all my worship I give you all my worship for you alone are God I give you all my worship I give you all Oh
Thank you, Father. Your presence, God. Yeah. 
found in your hands fullness of joy every fear suddenly wiped away here in your presence
is God, the only true God. Every other God is an idol. You are the only true one. Yeah. Every other God is an idol. Father, thank you for your greatness. Thank you for your presence, God. You honored us today. As we press through the walls, Father, you opened and released heaven. You reigned heaven on us today, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. We acknowledge you and your greatness today. We acknowledge you and your greatness, Father. Jesus, Jesus. you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Bless the Lord. Good morning. Hey, was that not powerful? Hey, without passion, you can't have power. That's what that was all about right here, passion. I'm telling you, that was awesome. Great stuff. I tell you what, I like getting here early and uh, checking them out when they're warming up. The band's getting together doing their thing, man, I, I tell you what, it's, it's, it's art, it's, you know, it's, it's all a form of worship. Well, praise the Lord, I'm Ernie Greenwood, I'm uh, honored and privileged today to uh, receive tithes and uh, your offerings to God. It's an exciting time for me, because uh, well, my wife and I have been doing this um, faithfully for, I don't know, 17 years or whatever it is, but anyway, it's uh, it's good stuff, and then did not really get into a lot of details of uh, What's, what's going on? I, I felt like God wanted to remind you guys, October 8th, Yom Kippur, Holy of Holies. Oh, I'm telling you right now, it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time to give. We have the gap offering on the sides, had the great and uh, awesome people. Of course, that is headed up by Deaconess Jerisha and uh, Barnes and um, uh, Dolores McDowell. They do an awesome job at doing this. And if you have time, to help serve, it's awesome, an awesome ministry to go out and serve these people. Uh, I'm really, I, I really enjoyed the times I've been out there. Missions this month is Adam Fowler, missionary in Peru. Last weekend, Adam and Liliana, along with their church family, ministered to a thousand in one of the poorest slums in Lima, Peru, through music, dance, giving food, and preaching the word. Lives were changed. And I've, I've been following them on Facebook. I don't understand a lick they're saying because I'm being honest. But I'm telling you right now, it's good stuff. They're out there making a difference. And that's what you're doing right now when you're sowing in these uh, ministries. That feeds off of this. I'm telling you, it's just like a, a big drop cord going somewhere else, another part of the world. world. And it's, that's what God does. He takes your money and he multiplies it. Oh, yeah. I can remember the times I gave offerings and stuff like this, and I'm, I'm just watch God, and, he, and I'm always in the season of expectancy. That's one thing about Yom Kippur. You need to be in a season of expectancy. I'm waiting for something good to happen, whether it be financially, maybe a blessing through you, your kids. I mean, I'll tell you what now, time to preach to them kids, too. Yours. You're the head of the house. I'm telling you right now, get excited for the word of the Lord is true. For the hope of glory moves through me and you if you get excited about it. Because he says, I'll give you desires of your heart. I just remember about two months ago, I was talking to my sons. And I'll say this and I'll stop. I got to hand it off. I ain't getting started yet.
But I was talking to my sons. I said, man, if you, and I was telling them, I said, man, you, you, you know, not that I'm trying to get their money, but I want them to see what God can do with it. You know, they're, they're doing little odd jobs and stuff on the side, making, you know, 60 bucks, 80 bucks, you know, whatever. And I said, man, you take that tenth and you lay it before God. I'm telling you right now. And I said, I'm not doing it for you and I'm not forcing you. You're going to do this on your own because it's between you and him. I, I mean, I, I'll say, I'll never make you do anything and he's not going to make you do anything. But I'm telling you right now, whenever you, you talk to your children, and then, and then my, you know, I got my oldest son a truck last year. Thank God. You know how kids are, man. They, they want to jack everything up and put big wheels on there. You know, like, man, I remember I had a Volkswagen, so everything back then was, you know, um, Daddy probably laughs about this. I remember he bought my first bug. It, well, the, the one I truly loved, it was a, a 72 Super Beetle. Paid 750 bucks for that thing had air conditioning. Can you believe that? And it worked, you know. Well, you know what? God does the same thing. I told him, I said, man, I'm telling you, just, I was talking to my son, Josh. I said, man, he's got a truck. He's got something for you. He's got a desire of your heart coming. And just, just relax, you know. Neighbor down the street, you know, got his son a nice truck, and they had to go to Statesville or somewhere like that. I don't know where it was. They had to go off. You know, and that's, that's fine. They looked it up, cars.com or whatever. I said, so I started surfing, you know, looking. Hey, I got to get this, get him a truck. I can't keep do one without the other. And, you know, lo and behold, one came right to us. Didn't have to go nowhere. And uh, it, it was a, it's a great truck. And then, well, you know, I, I'm telling you right now, I, I mean, and I was, and I said, man, God, this is good stuff. You know, I mean, I, he kind of backed up what I just told him. You know, he, he said, I'll give you desires of your heart. Man, we went drove that thing that Sunday morning. And I, I know y'all probably saying, that was Dale Stanley's old truck. It was, but I'm telling you right now, I had no idea it was on the market. But boy, when I found out, we drove that thing that Sunday morning. So what do you think about it? He said, I love it. I said, well, praise the Lord. I said, we're going to talk about this. And I said, if you like it, man, I drove that thing. I said, man, God, the air conditioning works. Everything. It's, I mean, this is good stuff. You know, it's paid for, you know. And uh, <laughs> I know you're sitting there saying, man, you get, I get excited, man. Most when you see the word working. I'm telling you right now, I've told, I said this before, it's like x lax It's working, baby. <laughs> it's working. You just got to give it time and just be patient. But I'm telling you right now, get excited. Uh, Usher, you can come forward, please. Well, we got our, I'll just pray today. I'm telling you right now, man. Mm. I'm, I, I was so down there right now. I was like, man, they, they need to turn me down a little bit today. I am wired up. I, and then not the two, three cups of coffee I had either. So we're okay. Well, let's stand up here and we'll pray over the offering. Tithes and offerings. Get excited. Mm. Got a lot of great things going on. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this tithes and offerings. Lord, we just thank you for this season, a new season. Lord, we thank you for the break in the weather. Lord, we just thank you for everything you do. We thank you for your word, for it works. Hallelujah. We thank you for everything you do for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, Bradley Miller. Good morning, Shield. How we doing? What Ernie didn't tell you is he actually stole that truck from his son. He's driving it now because it got air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know everybody want, he didn't want everybody to know that but all right well first of all let me get an amen for this weather oh my gosh thank you Jesus we were at a South Point game the family and I uh, Friday night and it felt like a wet blanket we woke up the next morning you needed two blanks just to go outside it was wonderful I just have a few announcements uh, as we all know or you may not know October is actually a uh, pastor appreciation month so and not only that it's his birthday on the 20th he's not here right now he's he's resting at the beach but we are uh, we <laughs> we are wanting to to do some gifts and motivation I think we've done this in the past but what what I am asking for you to do this didn't come from anybody this didn't come from pastor putting it in my ear but I would like us to if you can, if you don't want to, that's fine. But if you could, write him a letter. Um, if you could, also give him a monetary gift. Give him some money. Uh, I know he's, he, he doesn't show it as much, but he, he is still struggling over Pastor Kathy, and I think most of us are. Uh, but this is his first birthday without Pastor Kathy, so I think a motivational word and $100 would, be, would cheer me up. 
I know it's not going to replace her, but it, it's getting something started. Um, the kids are going to do something special for them. But if, if you wouldn't mind, just write them a birthday card, write them a motivational speech, give them some money if you can, and uh, turn that into the office, and, and we'll give it to them uh, one Sunday morning. We'll give it to them. We'll announce it in front of everyone. But I think that was something to just to cheer him up a little bit. And we're his, we're his church, we're his family, we love him, and we want him to keep going and give us some words so we can keep growing. <clears throat> now for some, some more fun, um, that Fifth Family Sunday was last, last week, and I think it turned out pretty good. If you weren't there, I hope you join us for the next one in December. I hope every single one of you loved it. We had a couple games, we had a couple gifts. I hope you learned something about your new church family and, and be able to take that further. And just don't let it stop there. Just keep learning uh, something new. Challenge yourself. Challenge to meet one new person every week. And I think that would be a great, great goal. And then eventually you'll know everyone in here. And hopefully we keep, keep growing. Um, also, we are going to have our first youth event at the end of this month, the last Saturday, the 26th. If you are willing to help with your time, awesome. If you are willing to donate money so we can feed the kids, take them somewhere, not on this trip. We're going to stay here in the church play a little bit of hide-and-seek, uh, do a bonfire, feed them some pizza. It's going to be a blast. There's several holes in these walls over the past, other, other youth doing hide-and-go-seek, so we might need some repairmen uh, to fix up the place after we play. <laughs> so, but it's going to be a blast, and also I wanted to announce our, if, if anybody, let me see a hand raise of anybody who reads the church email when you get it. All right, all right. So they did a poll on study. Mom, would, Mom loves you right now. She's the one who does it. But I saw a poll on, on the Internet that say only about 20% of, of people read their emails. So that is way more than 20%. I'd say that's 60 to 70 right there, so that's good. But we have, as of last week, we had about 79 pounds of candy out of our 300 goal. I do see a whole lot more bags out there. Um, actually, no, we're at 95, thanks to Mr. Jeff. He brought some in. So we're at 95, uh, but we are still short about 200 pounds. I think that's probably 50 pounds out there. So y'all are doing a great job, a uh, great job filling that up. We still have a couple weeks and um, keep giving. And it's, it's going to be an awesome, awesome time this October for Fall Fest. The amount of vendors that we're getting and just random things are happening for us, it's, it's definitely God that, that this is going to be an awesome event. All right, now we're going to have Miss Pat Thompson. She's going to have an announcement for you. And then Mr. Ernie Greenwood. Thank you, Bradley. Good morning, everyone. I have a, excuse me, no, I'm not going to introduce him. I have a great um, opportunity to announce what we call a soul winning power evangelism tra training that we want to do here in October and first part of November. It is like every other week. It starts today. But this thing, I want to read this. It says, so winning is not a program, but a passion. So winning is not an event, but a lifestyle. And souls are currency of eternity. Meaning that's, that's the only thing we can take with us when we leave as souls. So uh, we have a video we want to show by William Booth. He was the founder of Salvation Army. And he has a very unique video of a vision that Lord showed him about the lost. So we want to show that. And I want to have... We'll have flyers out in the foyer, and I just want you to look at it and see what day that you can come. Sundays at 1 o'clock to 2, only one hour. And see what Sunday that you can come or it's available for you to help us as a church, as a people, to learn more about soul winning and power evangelism. I saw a dark and stormy ocean. Black clouds hung heavily. Every now and then vivid lightning flashed and loud thunder roared. The winds moaned and the waves rose and foamed, towered and broke only to rise and foam, tower and break again. I saw myriads of poor humans plunged and floating, shouting and shrieking, cursing and struggling and drowning, in 
then some saint to rise no more. Out of this dark, angry ocean, a mighty rock rose, with its summit towering high above the black clouds that overhung the stormy sea. Around the base of this great rock, I saw a vast platform. And I saw with delight a number of poor, struggling, drowning wretches climbing out of the angry ocean. A few of those who were already safe on the platform were helping the poor creatures still in the angry waters to reach a place of safety. A number of those who had been rescued industriously worked and schemed by ladders, ropes, boats and other means to deliver the poor strugglers out of the sea. Some actually jumped into the water, regardless of the consequences and their passion to rescue the perishing. What puzzled me most was the fact that though all of them had been rescued from the ocean, nearly everyone seemed to have forgotten all about it. Anyway, it seemed the memory of the darkness and the danger no longer troubled them. These people did not seem to have any care about the poor perishing ones, who were drowning right before their very eyes, many of whom were their own husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, and even their own children. Many spent their time amusing themselves, growing flowers on the side of the rock, painting pieces of cloth, playing music, or dressing themselves up in different styles and walking about to be admired. Some occupied themselves chiefly in eating and drinking, otherwise taken up with arguing about the poor drowning creatures that had already been rescued. But the thing to me that seemed the most amazing was that those on the platform to whom he called, who heard his voice and felt they ought to obey it, or at least they said they did, those who confessed they loved him much, who worshipped him or professed to do so, were so taken up with their trades and professions their money saving and pleasures, their family circles, their religions and arguments about it, that they did not listen to the cry that came to them from the wonderful being who himself had gone into the sea. They did not care, and so the multitude went on struggling and shrieking and drowning in the darkness. And then I saw something that seemed to me even more strange. Some of these people on the platform to whom this wonderful being had called wanting them to come and to help him to save those perishing creatures, were always praying and crying out to him to come to them. And all the while he was down by his spirit among the poor, struggling, drowning creatures in the angry deep, his arms around them trying to drag them out, and looking up so longingly but in vain, crying to those in the rock with his voice hoarse from calling, Come to me! Come and help me! Then I understood it all. It was plain enough. The sea was the ocean of life. The sea of real, actual human existence. That lightning was the gleaming of piercing truth coming from God's throne. That thunder was the distant echoing of the wrath of God. Those multitudes of people shrieking, struggling and agonising the stormy sea were the thousands of lost people from every kindred, tongue and nation. The great sheltering rock represented Calvary, the place where Jesus had died for them, and the people on it were those who were being rescued. The way they used their energies, gifts and time represented the occupation and amusement of those who professed to be saved from sin and hell, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. A handful of fierce determined ones who were risking their lives and saving the perishing were true soldiers of the cross of Jesus. That mighty being who was calling to them from the angry waters was the Son of God, the same yesterday, today and forever, who is still struggling to save the dying multitudes about us from this terrible doom of damnation, and whose voice can be heard above the music, machinery and the noise of life, calling on the rescuers to come and help them save the world. My friends in Christ, you are rescued from the waters. You are on the rock. He is in the dark sea calling to you to come and help him. Will you go? Look to yourselves. The surging sea of life, crowded with perishing multitudes, rolls up to the very spot on which you stand. Will you linger on the bank? 
thinking and singing, praying about the poor perishing souls. Lay aside your shame, your pride, your cares about other people's opinions, your love of ease and all the selfish loves that have kept you back for so long and rush to the rescue of this multitude of dying men and women. Go to God. Tell him you're prepared to go down among the perishing crowds. Your happiness from now on will consist in sharing their misery, your ease in sharing their pain, your crown in helping them bear their cross, and your heaven in going to the very jaws of hell to rescue them. Now, what will you do? Amen. Good stuff. What will you do? Well, praise the Lord. Pastor Larry is at the beach, and I got a text uh, earlier this week. That, Could I do this? I was like, man, yeah. It's been too long. I tell you what, I, I get excited when I get those little texts from certain people about doing things like this, and uh, thank God this monitor's off up here. Man, this is this big stuff to me. That thing was killing me up here. I was doing ties off. <laughs> thank you, Greg. Anyway, thanks to all those people up there. But um, I'm Ernie Greenwood. I'm very honored and privileged to be here today to bring you the word. Who's excited today? Who's loving this weather? I'm telling you right now, it's not like fall. All oh, good things come in fall. I met my wife in the fall. Football comes in in the fall. I mean, it's just, it's fall, y'all. We can have fun, right? Well, praise the Lord. I'm going to be kind of going on what Pastor Larry has been preaching on, teaching on this uh, last couple of weeks about identity. Matter of fact, about a month ago, I think he had teached on, um, you know, identity. And I was like, man, that's crazy. I was just thinking about that the other day. You know how you, you hear all these commercials about LifeLock and, you know, these things they're trying to sell to protect your identity, you know. But, well, God's got this great insurance plan. It's called the Word. I'm telling you right now, He wants to protect your identity. He wants to give you one of like nature. He says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man or woman be in Christ, guess what? He doesn't say, guess what? I'm giving you the Greenwood parable. He says, you're a new creature, a new creation, something the world has never seen before. I'm telling you right now, it's time to get excited. In Romans 8 and 14 and 15, man, I'm telling you right now, boy, good time, man. Awesome. For all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading again to fear. That's of God's judgment. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons the spirit producing sonship by which you joyfully cry, Abba, Father. There's nothing like being a son of God. And women, you, you, you can be the son of God also. So it's nothing to do with gender, okay? You've heard Pastor Larry say, so I can be the bride of Christ, and you women can be the sons of God. So don't worry about gender, okay? We're a gender bender. How about that? Um, reading about identity, sometimes we lose focus on where we should be at as far as you know, I was thinking about this the other day about uh, identity. We forget who we are in Christ. We have, everybody's heard the word power, authority. That's what happened whenever Jesus gave up his firstborn right. When he was on the cross and he bled out for me and you. See, he's done everything he's going to do. It's up to us now. I'm telling you right now, when he bled out that water and that blood came out of him and it was coming for the church, his bride. Now, the bride, guess what? My wife, when she took my name, Greenwood, she has every right. She can write the checks. She's the queen. Are you listening? So you women out there, I'm telling you right now, it's, it's, marriage is an awesome thing. It's, it's a union between you and her and God, or however you want to say it. And I, I, I really believe that when she took my name, you know, she's got that authority. Right now, we're in the middle of doing some stuff around the house, remodeling stuff. You know, things are coming out right with the old, in with the new, right? Just like things are going on around here all the time. I'm, I mean, the lights are changing. I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And bathrooms upstairs have been wanting to do that for years. Man, this is good soil right here you need to sow into. I'm telling you, couple, by, by January or February, they start doing offerings for, you know, doing remodeling lights and stuff. Like, man, I jumped right in there, Bo. I'm talking about I did the nest heat plunge. I mean, I just went right in there. Let's go. Because uh, that's what it is. It's a season of change. Oh, I'm telling you right now, it's, it's a time to say it's the end of an age. No longer saying, oh me, oh my. 
Let me hear a battle cry. Let me call the voices out there. I, that's what he said. He said, you're a voice. You're to, you're to call out that word. You're here to declare, decree, and proclaim the word of God. Uh, in Joshua 10, 12. Oh, man, look at y'all so awesome. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered upon the Amorites before Joshua 10. In this Joshua 10, 12. But in the next verse, 13, God stopped the sun. And I always, when I read that verse, and you know, I always like to add a little humor to this, so don't get religious on me. But there's a song back in the 80s called I'll Stop the World and Melt with You. Well, I think they I think they didn't know that, but they had a revelation when they wrote that song. God will stop the world, and he'll melt with you. You know, he he took that sun and stopped it right there so they could do what they needed to do. I'm telling you right now, the word, and that's what kind of relationship's all about. You know, we're uh, talking about in tithes and offering about Yom Kippur. You know, in the tabernacle of Moses, I, I just, I mean, you, you remember when the times and, you know, we had this all decorated in, in the tabernacle, given a, re, a replica of the tabernacle of Moses, and, you know, PK would be up here teaching. It was beautiful, you know. Um, she's like Princess Diana. I mean, uh, she was royalty. She still is in a different realm, but... You know, I remember, you know, we, you know, studying all that. And, you know, it was starting to come back to me, you know. You remember the time we fell in love, Michael Jackson? That's why it was. It was like reading that all over again. That's what you need to do. You had need to have those kingdom dreams. You need to have those kingdom dreams where, you know, I was thinking about tithes and offers today. You enter in his gates with what? Thanksgiving, that's right. You enter his courts with praise. And then you find out when you get into holy holies, it's all about relationship that's what this service is about today relationship we're going to teach and preach have a good time laugh dale stanley's going to do communion i'm telling you right now boy it's going to be good stuff it's better than pinto beans and onions and cornbread on a good fall day don't i uh, we're from the south we eat good right well anyway in joshua 10 12 he said i'll stop the world met with you because they had a relationship with god he said i spoke with god i spoke with the lord and that's what we need to do, get up in the mornings. I know last week we had the, the um, uh, family day down at Life Center. It was fun. Man, thank God for all of you who put it on. I know when, I know it's a lot goes on with that setting stuff up, everybody behind the scenes. The food was awesome, but when they asked, somebody asked me the question, and I always try not to seem like, you know, religious because people say, what do you do the first thing in the morning? Well, I'll be honest with you, I do get up. I, I gave the answer to I think about what I had to do that day, but I was, I really get up and I think about, thank you, God, for another day. I'm, I'm born again, and I get to go out and do the word, you know. And, and in maintenance field, we're always fixing stuff, right? Well, guess what? That's what God is. He's a great fixer-upper, you know. He take bounty. You know, he's better than bounty, Bo. He's a quick picker-upper. He can clean it up. I'm telling you. Wipe it up. But he's also here to give you a... Uh, a consciousness of righteousness. In John, I mean, in Romans 14, 17, he's here, here to righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. There ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party, right, Deacon of Stores? I'm telling you right now, when you get that, you get that sense in you right there, joy in the Holy Ghost, you can have it. You get up here and you... You watch Miss Little Josh is up here worshiping today. Man, I'm telling you right now, that was joy in the Holy Ghost, man. That was just a, a spirit moving, you know, and it's through a woman. Can you believe that? I mean, through a woman? Man, I'm telling you right now, some of the most powerful women, I mean, uh, people in Christ are women. I mean, you know, because sometimes a man will say, you know what, I ain't got time for this. You know what? God said, well, guess what? I'll just get so-and-so here to do it because I know some of the greatest fire starters there ever was. I know... Uh, PK, she'll always be my spiritual mama, but I got another mama too. Her name is Kay Greenwood. Well, she came by about two days before my birthday. She come by and give my birthday present. She's sweet as, you know, cotton candy, I always say, you know, just, and pretty too, you know. I call her Mama Cita. That's about the only Spanish word I know. That means hot mama. So, anyway. She came by, and, you know, I've been working a lot, doing different things. You know, sometimes we need to just take care of ourselves. You know, we need to change, right? And she said, Ernie, if you'll do this, you do that, you know, if you just cut out all them Cokes, you know. 
Hey, I'm telling you, Doc told me, he said, hey, you got to quit eating like a teenager. I hang out with mine, you know, okay, I'm sorry. But anyway, and I start thinking, you know, maybe there's two, two's a number of witnesses, you know, agreement. Yeah, man, I need to get in agreement with them and say, yeah, I do. Well, I did. I lost 20 pounds. I was 321. Man, I'm telling you right now, it's, it'll sneak up on you, you know. You know, you're working all the time, you just grab something, blah, 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 you know, slinging out the window at you, you know, let's go, you know. Don't act like you don't do that, you know. I still like a good Coke every now and again, as long as it's peanuts and Saturday at, and I'm watching the ball game with my sons. But I had to refrain from getting those things so much because, I mean, like I said, it added up. But you know what? You, my mama came by and lit a fire because she could make a fire. You live in that house, mom and dad's house now, that wood stove. I'm telling you right now, that woman can make a fire. Well, that's just right now. The fire of God is made for us. It's made for us to keep it up as kings and priests. Because in Revelations 1, 5, and 6, it says, I have made you kings and priests. And that's our job as a priest in the, in the Moses. I, I know this ain't up there, so just go with me. The tabernacle of Moses, it was a priest's job to keep the fire going. You know what I mean? Every day the fire's got to be dwelling in Zion, the dwelling place of God. That's where it's got to be going all the time, and you got to be ready to light that fire because you're going to go by and you're going to light somebody's fire. And that's what my mama did that day. You know, I was like, man, I started feeling better. I was like, man, I don't feel as tired. I, I feel like I can bend a little bit more. I, I know that red is just pretty. That's just like Target. You know, you women like Target because that red, they're doing that for a reason. So that's why Coca Cola's got red up here. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> uh, just a little humor. But it's time to sing a new song. In Psalms 96, 1 through 4, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim good news of his salvation from day to day. That's what the gospel is, good news. Let me preach the good news. It's not, no, you know, condemning stuff. you got to put your sunglasses on. You know, everybody got quiet. What you mean? you got to put your sunglasses on. Keep those harmful rays from getting there, and you see no man or woman except in Christ. You don't, God don't see no sin. I mean, you know, I know sometimes the Holy Spirit gets or ain't working with you. You get them a little bit more mature. And you start saying, man, I need to cut that out. You know, that, and, 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 and you better take correction. Because correction doesn't mean rejection. It means I love you. You know, I love you. But anyway, I know. I, I, I shoot from the hip a lot. So just, just, just hold on. Hold on to the bar. We're going to take a ride. You ain't at Carowinds, baby. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works and wonderful deeds among all the people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Did you not hear today when she was worshiping, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised? I'm telling you right now, raise your arms up and if you need help, just call somebody, you know, like Moses did. Hey, you need a couple, he, he's getting tired and weary. You know what? Call upon two, two to number of witness. I'm going out there and, and, and change the world. There's nothing wrong with asking help. Man, I, I'm telling you right now, pride's in a hot dog, and God cooked that out. <laughs> Carolina pride, you know what I mean? You think you got, you think, oh, I'm, I'm all high and mighty. I know everything. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you'll find out real quick. God will cook that out of you. <laughs> Blow me kisses when I'm preaching good now. Oh, I, I know. I, I was going through a situation a while back. It seems like I'm always in the fire, but I was calling people. Hey, I was asking for advice. You know what? The Bible says. What does it say? Godly cow. Hey, hey, there's going to be a victory. That's what you need to be claiming, victory. I got a brother-in-law, my, my sister and my brother-in-law, they got a little uh, schnauzer. It's cute as a button, you know, hyper, you know, like ricochet rabbit kind of hyper, you know, bing, 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 you know. In old victory, that's the dog's name. And he's a trial lawyer. So every time he's calling victory, victory, guess what? He don't know it in the subconscious. He's calling just like you're calling in money. You know, victory, guess what? You need to be claiming things in your life. 
You need to look in the mirror every day and say, I'm a champion. You might not look like a champion. You might not feel like a champion, but you, you start using that word. Oh, I'm telling you right now, you, if you need some hair, you need some teeth, just go buy some. Hey, mm, we live in a day and age, we can go get it, you know. I'm not saying God can't make it happen. You know, I'm all about the supernatural. I'm telling you right now. But when we use that word, and, and this is one thing I learned the other day, and actually I was back there studying, I was going over stuff, I was like, man, you use the natural to relate to the supernatural. If Megan will put this up there, that P equals I times E. All right, y'all y'all get ready. You got to write this down. You go study something. It'd be fun. Well, P equals I times E. This is part of Ohm's law in electricity. A lot of you guys out there maybe know a little bit about Ohm's law, and it, it's pretty exciting to me because you see that word up here, P? I know, and this is natural stuff, so just hold on, but I'm going to relate it to the supernatural, so get ready. The P equals power in, in watts. In, in other words, 1,500 watts. You know how you say your microwave? 1,500 watts, so roughly 10 amps if you're running on 120 volts. Well, anyway, P equals watt power is that exousia. Everybody know what that is? That's the authority out there. It's a Greek word, exousia. Whereas another word for definition is authority, power. And that's what happens. The E, you see the E up there? That stands for your voltage. And you say there's different voltages out there, okay? 120 volts, 208, 4, 4, 480. I mean, you know, I mean, just go, you know, it's all over the place, you know. Well, that I is the intensity, which is amps. Well, I times Z, the intensity times that word, which is the voltage, it's going to equal your power, your exousia. That I'm telling you right now, like she said right there, joy in the Holy Ghost. You've got the power, the power you'll ever need. You can take that intensity, that intense situation, which is your amps, it's going to draw, and you multiply that times your voltage, which is the word, and it's going to equal the exousia. That, another word for E is dunamis. Dunamis word. Man, I'm telling you right now, you multiply them two together and you have power. You have power to change your situation and other people's situation. You think you had a bad back for, you know, oh, I just had a bad back. You, ever, you go through situations and God healed me. I'll never forget the time when God healed my, I mean, I really did. My mama, I was going to a pain clinic. You know, you get those shots. I don't got name up, but anyway, it's been a while back. But I, I, that second one, man, they hit the nerve. Oh, man, no more of this, one, brother. It ain't helping. I'm done. Well, lo and behold, it was just God telling me, you got faith. Boy, I came down here and received my healing on Sunday. So I'm telling you right now, it's what you believe. Your faith, God will take you where you want to go. You just got to believe it. But guess what? Then you got to receive it. You can believe in something, but you better receive it, and you better get it down inside. Then you what, what you're here to do, and then you're going to achieve. you got to believe, receive, and achieve. Well, I came down here that Sunday morning. I got healed. I mean, right then. Matter of fact, we was moving furniture 30 minutes later, and Pastor Larry's off there doing a bunch of stuff in these offices. And I was going around telling everybody, I mean, I just, God just healed my back. God just healed my back. I'm, I mean, you know, everybody said, man, he's probably a nut. He, he's got to be a nut, you know. I was fanatic, you know. I'm like, but, I mean, I was just, God just healed my back. I'm telling you, you know. And, and, but sometimes you got to lose your dignity and get your deliverance. You listening to me? You got to lose it. You got to lose something to get something. You got to trust God. Just like we was talking about this morning about ties on. You got to trust him. You got to believe in him that his word is true. And when the, I was explaining to my kids, I said, hey, man, he says in the Bible, in, this, in, in Malachi, and I, I, he says, prove me. Prove me. And I mean, with a good heart, you know, I, I, gotta, I always say, man, man, my heart clean. I want to make sure everything's good. You know, I feel like sometimes I'm like a PLC. I'm, I'm always scanning, hey, am I good? You know, <laughs> you know it, it's kind of funny because, I mean, you could be doing something. I'm doing this with the wrong reason, wrong intent. But without the heart, the heart is the issues of life. I mean, I mean, your heart means something. I always be thinking, you know, just in loving on God, a relationship. Man, I tell you what, this, 
And just like I just said, the next verse, I'm, I'm telling you, God's good. He says, I'll give you all the power you'll ever need. I've already given it out. I bled it out for the, for the church. When that blood came out, said, guess what? You're no longer Mrs. Paula Greenwood, but you are now Mrs. Jesus Christ, the bride. I'm telling you right now, you can write the checks. You can call the things that be not as though they were. You can pray for people. You can lead. I'm telling you right now, he says, I want you to go out there and be a voice in the wilderness, just like John did. Guess what? It happened. It'll make your baby leap. That Holy Spirit get in there and start praying. Man, I'm telling you right now, this is good stuff. Oh, it's exciting times. But in Mark 5, 25 and 30, through 34, man, oh, man. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. 12 years is a long time to go through something, right? And has suffered many things of many physicians and spent all she had. It was nothing better but rather grew worse. Who's ever been in that situation? When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press and came in and pressed behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. She'll be sozoed. She'll be complete. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him. He knows when that power goes out. Turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging through to thee, and thou sayest, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her. She had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him. And told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. She was made clean. Go in peace and, I, and be whole of thy plague. She had, she had bled for a long time. She was, I mean, you know, 12 years is a long time to go through something. I mean, you know, we'll think months we had to go through something and then God heals me. But 12 years? Man, but you know what? That experience... It's going to be, that's why I always say when I go through something, this is going, I'm going to help somebody else in the, fu in the future. You know, that's the way I look at it. I, well, I told my wife years ago, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to be able to tell somebody something later on. You know, maybe it'll help them, you know. And whenever you go through stuff, you say, God healed me. You can go up there and talk to them about it. Had a situation a while back. Like I said, I work in maintenance and chemical plant. Had a guy, I seen him limping. Way off the end of the plant. I know, I know about all of them anyway. And I said, hey, man, what's going on with you? He said, man, I don't know what. Doctors can't find out what's going on with my feet. They're checking for gout and all this other good stuff, you know. And, and I said, well, man, I, I, and I said, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't try to sugarcoat him. I didn't try to rub feet with him like I was under the table. I'm telling you right now, I said, Bo, I just straight up, faith is now, right? Faith is now. I said, Bo, I said, I believe God heal you. I said, and then I, I prayed for him, and then, and then I told him what happened to me because I just felt like, it, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it later. I'm going to tell you what happened to me, but right now I just believe this is now. That's what it's all about now, not, not yesterday and, you know, talking about the future. Faith is now. So I prayed for him. Next day come in, he wasn't hurting or nothing like that. His feet was walking straight, you know, everything was good. He's a big guy like me, and my wife knows, knows about him. And I, this happens to me all the time because I've been through that. I had compassion. That's what Jesus felt whenever that lady came up. He, he had compassion. And that's what he is. He's a loving, loving father. He says, man, I, 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 see, I see out there is, is compassion. And then I told him, yeah, hey, man, God healed my feet. I had planters awards. I mean, you can see them things. They're like, ugh, man, I don't even want to think about them no more. I fought them things for two years. I'd go get two burn off one foot. Let them heal up. Go get two more burn off the next one. I mean, I did that. And nothing like stinking flesh either. With a laser. Ugh. You want my flesh burning? Mm. I don't want nobody to burn. You hear me? I'm here to put the zinc on you. Zinc is the number one ingredient so you don't get burned. You get out in the sun. <laughs> That's what I tell people. I see zinc at work. You know, I, I, my mind works a little bit different than others. But just hold on. We'll be okay. 
I Greenwood paraphrase everything, so don't, don't, my daddy's even worse than I am. You know, he come up with crazy stuff, too. I mean, you know, I get it right from him, so y'all got any, you want to take it up with somebody, take it up with him. But anyway, you know, God, it, it, you know, that's, this is, man, I was, I was so new in Christ. You know, I mean, you know, really, this is a long time ago, but I was so new, and I was so excited. Just got turned over, and me and wife was doing this. I think she was pregnant with Ernie. Now he's almost 17. And then, and I was sitting out there one Sunday morning, and God uh, gave word of knowledge. Pastor Lane, somebody got something going on with their feet. Bo, I'm telling you right now, you hurt long enough. You, All right, that's me. That's me. But listen to this. Just like her, I said to myself after I got prayed for in my truck, old Red, I still got him. Told her she was pregnant. I said, I believe by next Sunday, my feet's going to be healed. You know, it was confession in her mouth. She said, in, in, in some of the other gospels, she said, it says in there, it was recorded. She said within herself. She didn't even really speak it out. But I did speak it out to her, but don't worry about how long Moses' beard, uh, beard is and how many angels can dance on the piano. Let's don't divide this too much. Just believe, okay? I was sitting there, and I said, I, I believe it's going to be healed. And, man, that next, you know, I went by two more work, uh, two more days at, at, at work. Man, it's still hurting. I'm still believing. But on that third day, resurrection power came up because on that, uh, that Wednesday morning, I woke up after sleeping the third shift. That's when them old dogs would hurt too, boy. You'd wake them up when you get out of the bed, and you're like, oh, no. And I, I, I sit down, I put my feet on the floor. I was like, darn, suckers ain't hurt. You know, I southern, okay? I didn't say nothing bad. But I have, so don't, don't think I ain't, you know. I'm glad they turned that thing off. I know I sound southern, but I'm, I just speak it like it is. I mean, whatever's in there is coming out. But I, I put my feet on the ground, and I was like, man. I called my wife right then. I said, you won't believe this, you know. It's not like something on he hauled on. You won't believe this. But... <laughs> Anyway, I put my feet down, and I, I called my wife up. And I said, girl, you won't believe this. My feet ain't hurt no more. And in two weeks, those suckers dried up. I ain't never had a problem. And that's been 17 years ago, so give glory to God. I'm telling you right now, man, I'm, it's exciting. And then you, but, you know, I, I didn't find out later on. You know how you, you, you know, I was, I'm growing in Christ. We're always growing, you know, just like it says in the Word, you're beholding His face in the mirror. In 2 Corinthians 3, 18, you know, you're just going from glory to glory. You know, when you get Revelation stuff, you know, I just can't help but tell somebody, you know. I'm just like Minnie Pearl. I'm just happy to be here, you know. I'm just, you know, let's go with it, babe, you know. But uh, <laughs> He restores you to a new relationship. That's what this day is all about, a new, new relationship. And... uh <laughs> The thing about that is, is, and whenever I went through those things, and now I'm praying for people, and things happen, because I know God's word's true, and I'm like, that's why I, like, I had compassion about two weeks ago, well, maybe a month ago. I, I texted my wife, I said, the guy was walking around there, he's taking these six-inch steps, you know, like this. You know, you know what I mean? Back trouble, a.k.a. killer, you know. That's your trunk of your tree, buddy. If you mess with that back, that thing is nothing but electrical cords and, I mean, nerves flying everywhere, you know. And I said, man, what's going on with you? And I said, he said, man, my back. Mm. Like I said, I said, man, I had to tell him. Now, that right there, I'm going to be honest with you, I slowed down. I took him to the movies and everything, went out to eat before we, I told him. I said, hey, man, I'm going to pray for you. And I, I prayed for him. I said, man, he's like, man, I'll take it. You know, I mean, you, you know, sometimes you just got to know, you know. You got to know, you know or knows, you know. Not, not only that, you know, you got to believe, but you got to know. You don't go up, oh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe. You got to know. You got that passion, you know. It's like she's up here today worshiping. I'm telling you right now, it was passion, boy. Whatever you need, God's already wrote the check. You need healing. You need, you need a job. You need an opening. You need deliverance. God's already wrote the check. He says, but, but I need you to be the voice. I've already, I've already paid the price. There's no price too high for you or for him. 
In Luke 7, through 11 through 19. Oh, man, this is good stuff right here. I'm, I'm, I'm winding down, so everybody hold on. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nyan. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now, when he came near, I'm going to say near because I don't like nigh. To, I, this is King Jimmy, so relax. Near to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out. And the son of his bro mother, and she was a widow, and much people of his city was with her. And then the Lord saw her, and he had compassion on her, and he said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched her, cuts the briar, and they, they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And, right, and he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all that glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. And his rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea, and throughout all the region round about, and the disciples on John showed him of all these things. And John called on him two of his disciples and said unto them, saying, are thou he that should come, or look we for another? They're, they're looking for a Messiah. That's when I look out here, and I, like I said, I'm, I got my sunglasses on. They're in my pocket, actually. So I see out there Messiahs out there. You're just another form of Jesus. Like I said, you can write the check. You can call the things that be not as though they were. Whatever you at is your ministry. You say, well, I'm just a... I'm just a mama taking care of babies. Guess what? You are, you, you're raising up kings and priests and prophets. And, I mean, you don't know what you got there in your hand. You got a little vessel there, and you think, well, that little stinker just did that. You know what? That's why, you, that's why we're here, mamas and papas, to raise them, right? And we're here to guide them in the direction what God wants you to go. You're to call the things to be not as though they were. You're the first, first fruit of God. And I got scripture to back, back that up. You belong to him. Anyone heard the two, ten lepers? This is in Luke also. It's just shot to me, so just hold on. News flash from heaven. You belong to God. There was ten lepers that came up to Jesus. Hey, man, heal me. You know, giving, you know, just, man, we're, we're, we're hurting. You know, leprosy was a what? Eating of the flesh. I mean, it's nasty, you know, things like that. Well, you know what? Jesus had compassion. He healed them all. But only one came back to give thanks. And I got to think about that right there. That one represent the tenth. He was a tithe. He belonged to God. You belong to God when you give him thanks. You give him thanks, I'm telling you right now, you belong to him. Oh, I'm telling you right now, you're the first fruits. You're to say, well, I'm, I'm the first one in my family to do this or whatever, get this revelation. Guess what? You got to teach somebody. You got to explain to them. And you tell them in your terms. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't get so religious where you... You got, I don't like dials and stuff. I'm not King Jimmy. I'm, I'll give you the Southern version. I got Southern Siri on my phone. You know, she answered to y'all. You know, hey, y'all. You know, that's just a joke. Just relax. <laughs> but it, and that thing right there, you belong to him. It's all about relationship. That first fruit, oh, I'm telling you right now, this is a beautiful time and season. Leaves are changing, everything, like I said, is cooling off. Your air conditioning ain't sweating as much. And, you know, you're not sweating as much. Your power bill hopefully goes down a little bit, you know. <laughs> but I, I'll tell you right now, supernatural. I, I, I don't know about y'all, but, uh, I mean, and I'll tell you this. I meant to text Uncle Wendell about this. I was like, man, I, I really believe. I'm, I know you're sitting there saying, Ernie, no. I remember last year, my, my power bill was three, 300 bucks, you know, in the, in the summer. I mean, Bo, look here. I know y'all sitting here saying, you know, a dollar here, a dollar, whatever. 68, 70 in my house, Bo, year round. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. God made Carrier, when he came with air conditioning years ago, it was for me. And Deacon Deb, I mean, we got to have it, you know. You're going to be comfortable, you know. Well, I'm telling you right now, if I don't know about y'all, but I've noticed a difference in my power bill. It's just like it's going down. It's not going up. You know, we had a pretty hot summer. No rain. But I'm telling you right now, I believe it's the, it's the ground you're sowing into. 
Be expecting things like that to happen. Look at it and just say, man, that didn't cost me as much as I thought it was going to do, you know. Sometimes I used to open up that email, you know, and be like, you know. Now I know you're sitting there saying, well, God's got it all. He does, I know, but I'm trying to be the best I can with what I got, you know. But anyway, I, I things I notice all the time. But in Galatians 4, 4 through 7, this is what God gave you that power to be. Remember pi? P equals I times E. It's the easiest thing you'll ever remember when it comes into the scientific, but you can relate it to the supernatural. Because sometimes that's what God happens to the natural, then the supernatural, right? Power. Therefore, believers, since we have confidence and full freedom to enter into the holy place, oh, man, I'm telling you, the place where God dwells, no longer does that king or priest have to go in for you. You now can see the revelation that you are kings and priests. By means of the blood of Jesus, by this new and living way which he initiated and opened for us, through the veil, as in the Holy of Holies, that is through the blood of Jesus. Whenever that veil was broken, I'm telling you right now, that veil was broke for you to have a relationship. If the veil was lifted up and the groom kissed the bride, guess what? You have a relationship right now, and that's what communion is about today. When you come forward, I'm telling you right now, you whatever you need is in the blood. When you take care of that, you... You participate in communion. You're taking the blood of Jesus, which represents everything. So, so you are made complete. But you got to come down here. You're not here to. You come down here with a um, with a righteous mind. Because sometimes people think, well, I, I, they're not as righteous as me, or I'm not as righteous as them. Well, I'm gonna tell you there ain't one way of righteousness. It's first class. There ain't nothing God does is coach. Are you listening? So God said, come fly with me. Oh, yeah, some of them old Frank Sinatra tunes. I listen to them. I know you say, well, they talk about drinking stuff. I, I still listen to them because I'm telling you, I can take some parts of that, and I'm worshiping. You know what I mean? I take God's, I'm telling you, it's, it's out there. you got to make it what you want to. They'll take some of your stuff and turn it around. That old devil, bless his heart, you know, he's defeated, you know. It's going to take you and I to be a voice in the kingdom. That's what it is. God's got something on his mind. It's called glory. He said, in the beginning, I'll let me, I'll just create glory. I know light, be the glory. You are the glory. You are sitting up there with him on the right side, which means authority. You have all power, which is the intensity times voltage, to do what you need to do. You, got, you think, well, I'm in the banking industry. Guess what? That's your ministry. I'm in the real estate. What? Hey, good stuff. Y'all get together. Two of you make witness. Hello? Doctors, hey, you might be a custodian, whatever. I'm a mama sitting at home. Guess what? You got all the power. You have the right to have communion with God on a daily, daily, every morning. Get up, just give him thanks because he is what? Worthy to be praised. All these ancient days, no longer saying, oh, me, oh, my, let me holler out a battle cry. He said, I'll melt the sun. I'll stop, the, I'll stop it for you. Look it up, man. I'm telling you, I, I listen to that stuff, and I just get a kick out of it. I think they were writing Jesus songs. They didn't even know it. I stopped the world and met with you. Well, anyway, it's all about relationship. As Dale Stanley comes up, and he, he, he goes over communion and stuff like this, and he says, it's time to look at yourself as righteous. Man, I'm telling you, teach your kids. Tell them where you are. Tell them where they're going to be. It's all about righteousness. Relationship, man, there's nothing like marriage and relationship between a man and a woman. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's great. It's whenever you come, two come together and then you put God in the mix. And you say, well, I like my wife and I, we didn't start out in, like that. It ain't where you started, baby. It's where you finish. Champions aren't born. They're made. Are you listening? I'm telling you right now, get excited. Where's Uncle Dale at? Y'all get ready, prepare your hearts, see yourself as righteous. Get ready for a relationship like you've never seen before. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you through? <clears throat> Thank you.
That was wonderful. I enjoyed it a whole lot. You know, he got to talking about warts on feet before I start this communion. I just want to tell you, last year, he mentioned that while he was up here preaching. And I was sitting right over there with my wife. And I had them seed warts on my, on my fingers, you know. He'll tell you how, he doesn't tell you how aggravating they are. <clears throat> Try to get rid of them. You hit something and they hurt. And he was talking about that. And I looked down and I didn't see them. They was gone. They was gone off my hand. I told my wife, she's so full of faith. She said, they on the other hand. <laughs> and I said, well, they're gone off of it too. I'll tell you what's going to happen this morning. Y'all never been up here, but them lights are so bright, I can't even see. We're going to have communion this morning. It's a real important thing. But I'm going to tell you, something ha- different is going to happen this morning. We, we're going to eat his body and drink his blood. And I'm going to tell you, he's going to do something special this morning. He's going to do some healing this morning when we do this. Emotionally and physically. It's going to happen. God told me sitting right back there, that's what I want you to say when you go up there. So if you'll just bear with me a minute. By the way, I get to do this because I'm old.
everybody's welcome to come down here. I just want to tell you that silver trays have got grape juice in them, and the gold has got wine in it. So.
Let us pray. Father, we just love you and we worship you and praise you. We thank you for your blood. And we, we thank you for your body. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to do right now. Like Ernie said, this and now. If Ernie will come up here a minute. Anybody needs it, any prayer, we'll be here. We're going to pray for you because I know what God told me. So I know there's healing going on. There's physically, physically healing and mental healing. And we thank you for it all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.